Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to contribute to the discussions of one of the great social policy topics of our time. Now, my own interest in basic income is very long-standing. Uh, and indeed, while discussions of basic income are more in the news today than ever before, its own history goes back far further. Indeed, I spent a lot of time, 40 years ago and more, interviewing people, they were then in their 80s, who had been part of the social credit movement of the interwar years. Now, Major C.H. Douglas, an almost wholly forgotten figure now, but you can find him there on the first page of Keynes's general theory. Keynes identifies him as one of the very few economists arguing for underconsumptionist approaches to the economy. Douglas was the originator uh, of social credit, a theory that suggested that a national dividend should be provided to all citizens in the United Kingdom in order to distribute the dividend of the industrial machine. Now, uh, Douglas was supported by a militant group of people as well, a uniformed march about the streets group of people who were called the Green Shirts, the Green Shirt Movement for Social Credit. And when I interviewed people who'd been members of that movement uh, 40 years after they had taken part, there were a series of arguments that they continue to, be, to put forward, many of which resonate today in the debates about basic income. Now, from a Welsh perspective, and from the position of the Welsh government, there are limits to do with the powers that we have, their interrelationships with the powers reserved to the UK government, that mean that not all the arguments for universal basic income can be tested in a pilot here in Wales. So, first of all, those early advocates of social credit argued, as do basic income supporters today, that this should be a universal, a universal benefit. The Earth's resources belong equally to everybody, Douglas said, and it is because of those world resources that we have an industrial machine that gives us the ability to distribute the benefits to everyone. And that universal component of UBI isn't something that our experiment in Wales will be able to test. But those early supporters, and this is another argument that continues to today, those early supporters believed that a universal basic income would lead to a greater degree of equality in our society, that it would matter the most to those who have the least, that it would have the effect of levering up the incomes of many people to a position where they too would be able to enjoy participation in the life of the community around them in a way that others are able to take for granted. And in our experiment, which we are still working on in terms of the detail, but where we expect to be able to offer a basic income to a group of young people in Wales who are leaving our care system, that will undoubtedly have the impact of raising the incomes available to those young people and in the way that our Wellbeing of Future Generations Act tells us we must, will help us on the journey to a more equal Wales. Now the third big debate around universal basic income, of course, is what's sometimes called the surfer or the freeloader issue. If people have enough to live on, then why would anybody choose to work? Now, Douglas and his supporters took this idea head on. They argued that a universal basic income or a national dividend, as they would say, would alter the relationship between income and work, but certainly wouldn't eliminate it. What it would do, they argued, and 
those people who today argue for what's called asset-based welfare would argue, is that if you have enough to live on, then you make different decisions about your future. Your horizons are not focused on how do I get through the day, how do I get through the week, how will I have somewhere to stay and enough to eat this weekend. It allows people to make decisions in the here and now that are investment decisions, that change the way in which they think about their futures and how they are able to use their talents in a way that they would wish to do. And working with a group of young care leavers, I think that aspect of universal basic income will be particularly able to be tested in the Welsh pilot. So that's the position we're in today. We're still at the design stage. We're determined it will be a co-created scheme, working with young people in our care system and those who represent them. And then to have a pilot in which we can test these propositions, gather the evidence together and hopefully make plans for the future. Thank you very much for the chance to have been with you today.